morning, good afternoon, good evening, all. It's Bear here. And I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel, A Box With No Lid. A channel I'm creating not just to bring the awareness and the understanding about the lived reality of trauma, but I want to delve into this day-to-day -day understandings that we can, we can learn so that we can improve the quality of our lives and build the resource base that we need to heal. Now, in this video, one of the things when we go through complex trauma, when we have especially multiple type and multiple events, you know, all these different traumatic experiences over a length of time, the process that it creates as part of our threat response and the dissociative processes as well as the free shutdown processes is there's this mechanism of compartmentalization, of breaking everything into little boxes, of sectioning parts of ourselves in our life and putting them into, a, the, into the metaphorical basement, trying to recreate a different person and make that not have happened because it's in a box, it doesn't exist. And this compartmentalization to be able to go, I don't have the resources to cope. I don't have the resources to deal or to look at what's happening or what's happened. Because I need to go to work, I need to function, I need to survive, I need to go to school. Whatever is required of you, whatever is your automatic need to do, that, that, that repetition thing that you do all the time, that whether it's going to school, going to work, you know, cleaning the house, whatever it is, that mechanism of taking what's happened or what's been triggered, putting it to one side to, you know, in the beginning we go, we'll look at it later. But in reality, we just want it to go away. That creates a thought process and a thought structure of boxes, for want of a better analogy. And every time we create a box, I must say, in the beginning this works. The reason it's quite common, or it's actually more common than, than most would like to admit, is because it, in the beginning it works. It allows us to get on with things we need to do to survive, to pay the bills, to food, or whatever it is we're doing. So we go, this is a good thing. It also allows us to avoid everything that comes with being triggered to a degree. So it's believed that it's a good thing and it becomes a habit. But what are we actually doing? This is the kicker part of this is when we compartmentalize and anybody who's gone through complex trauma, we all do it and have done it and are doing it until we actively are aware and start to change it. When we create these boxes, all the person that we are that is within that box that's good is also locked away. All the person that we were at those moments that did not deserve what was being done to us or what happened gets locked away. And we dissociate and depersonalize and dehumanize ourselves every time we do it that little bit more. As I said, in the beginning, this process works. After a length of time, we become so detached from our physical being and our physical construct of everything that we are that we get just like a drone fulfilling what is required. We don't have dreams of successes and, and things and pursuits. We don't have fantasies and ideas and hopes for the future. We just routinely fulfill what is required. That is what compartmentalization does over time. And that time can be decades. So in trauma understandings, we need to really get that sometimes when we do things that for the short term work, it's okay, but we need to have the discipline to not make it a habit. 
and that's the the difficult part because any one of us that have gone through especially complex trauma multiple type multiple event we can't we're powerless to look at what happened our body will block it and stop it our body will shut down our body will do all these things to prevent us so it feels like it is the only option that we've got and i wish i could wave a magic wand and go well yeah do this and it will not happen this compartmentalization but i can't and nobody can we just need to be aware that that is what we're doing in the beginning especially, or when we first start to address this stuff, just simply being aware that, yes, I know I am doing this. I'm doing this because of this, is one of the most powerful steps we can take. It sounds like it's, it's nothing or it's meaningless. But what we're doing is we're acknowledging our own worth. We're acknowledging that we have learned a habit that is not beneficial and we're opening the door to the possibility that at some point we're going to address it and change it that is a huge step a huge step when we've gone through trauma one of the greatest challenges is admitting we need to change because admitting we need to change we know that we're going to have to address a whole bunch of things that we don't think we can so taking that step little by little by little, reinforcing that step little by little by little by acknowledging, yeah, I know I'm doing the same behavior. But I know at some point I'll be able to change it. And it's okay. It's huge. And I want you guys to really grasp how huge that actually is. Because the more you do that, you are disarming all the things that block you from changing it. You're also opening a crack in your door to allow new things in that can give you the resources to change it. You are starting to admit and work with the broken way you have learned to think. And you've learned that from those that have done harm to you in the situations that have done harm to you. You've learned to address that it's broken. And you learn and you're making the choice to be willing to relearn and to change it. As long as it takes, as slow as you need to do it, as little step by little step as you require. But you're still making those steps. And that is huge. That is huge. And as I said in the previous video about compartmentalizations and how we create these beliefs we create this situation of habitual behaviors to cope the admitting that we need to change we need to relearn is huge so when we start to address how we have separated ourselves from everything when we've done it and this is the last part and this is one of the, the the more confronting parts of this video of this whole process and this is where just having an understanding is important in the first step when we've habitually separated ourselves compartmentalized and done all these processes to try to cope and function our nervous system has learned to desensitize from anything physical, anything that we engage with. That's what depersonalization is. That's what depersonalization is. That's what dissociation is. That's what dehumanization does. It's to take the emotion out. It's to take what is living out of that situation and give it a knowable structure. And when we start to bring the changes in, we also need to realize we need to relearn our neurological responses. We need to re-engage the nervous system. And we need to do it in ways that doesn't overwhelm. 
Now, the longer we've been isolated, the longer it will take and the more gentle we need to be. You do this overwhelming point, all you're doing is reinforcing what happened. We need to do this slowly and gently. Now, I find in the very beginning, solfeggio frequencies and things like that, the, the, the YouTube is filled with loads of solfeggio frequencies and bioneurals and all these different things. Put aside what's in the title. Like, you want the ones that associate with what it is you're looking for. But it's more a sound and a vibration that you're introducing to your nervous system in an environment that you completely control. As a way of starting to, you know, rehabilitate your nervous system to respond to stimulus. I find, and solfeggio frequencies have been around for forever. You can get them through tuning forks, there's whole little sets. And I think they're really cool. And I think they're a very underrated tool. And it's something we can use to stimulate our nervous system by sound. Tibetan bowls, bells, these sort, all these sorts of tools. Drums, they are sound, they create vibrations. Our nervous system responds to those vibrations. And we can use it to start to rehabilitate and exercise our nervous system to not get overwhelmed. And then we can step into music. The only thing with music, I would prefer music without words, instrumental only. The words carry meaning, the words feed our subconscious and so forth and so forth. The words can provide escapism or ways of thinking that are counter to what it is we're trying to do. So no words, just sound. That's why the solfeggio frequencies, Tibetan bowls, bells and all these sorts of things, drums are really cool. Because that vibration stimulates the entire nervous system in our body. And we can get our nervous system used to engaging in new things. That's just a little hint and something you guys can choose to have a play with. But as I said, when we're bringing in the changes, we need to get our nervous system on board. We need to relearn how to physically engage. When we depersonalize, we take out all the emotion. We need to bring the emotion back. The emotion comes back through our nervous system and physical feeling, physical sensations. So we need to do that just as gently as we're doing it with the cognitive, with the ideas. I hope you guys understand, and I will do more videos on this because this is a big step. But as I said, the main point now is that step of acknowledging that I'm doing this to protect myself. If we achieve that, that's a big one. As always, I love you guys' comments and feedback. Please be mindful, please be safe, please be respectful, and I'll see you all next time.